And um, first of all, this now I've been uh, president of SIVA for one year, and I have to say that it has been a fantastic learning time for me because there are very, very many things that you don't see when you're going to competitions, perhaps in the jury or if you're going to a judge, and as was earlier also as a competitor. Uh, as a president, you see a lot of things that happen is happening in the background, and there are many, many possibilities, and there are also many, many problems that you can see. And in that case, we'll start. This year, we've had a number of events, and there we have learned that even though that we think that these big events will be run without any type of problems, we have found that, hmm, how, what could we do in the future? So our plan is for each and every uh, championship nominate from the Bureau a SIVA coordinator that will be in touch with the contest organization all the time going up to the contest. And I think that is the first point that perhaps is the most important one because many times when we see, look upon a competition, a championship, and we see there has been some type of problems or things are happening when we come there that we don't know about. And I think this is a classical thing that it's a lack of communication. And if we do as we did many years ago, when we had a liaison officer, we will now restart that. And even if there is somebody that has been connected to SIVA earlier, we think the best is to have somebody that is connected directly to the Bureau and has to report to the Bureau. Of course, then there is also the biddings that are coming in. Is actually a bid what it will be in the future, or is the bid a wish what it should be in the future? And we need also, as FAI are doing now when they are looking on World Air Games, they have a whole long list how they should approach a bid and how they should look into the bid to see that what is actually the best bid of those that have come in. And many times, perhaps if you have yourself written a bid, you know, it's quite easy to forget some things and emphasize things that is not so very important. But the main thing is that there is an aerobatic championship and we have to focus on those things that is important for aerobatics. <coughs> and in this way also to have this supervision is uh, to get in touch with the organization before. And you know that uh, we have a championship guide. We started this year, 2013, with a draft. And this draft was, um, we've been working for many, many years with this championship guide. It was called earlier Contest Organization Handbook. And we are coming closer and closer. But we saw also this year that there were some things that was so very obviously that we didn't write it in this championship guide. Now we are starting to have something like a preface in this championship guide where we say that this must be done. Also, many times there is financial questions, the budget. You know, in many other commissions, the budget for a championship has to be approved by the Commission. I think this is too far to go, but I think it should be some sort of a cooperation between SIVA and the organizer to talk also about the budget so we could see a little bit on 
how is the organizer planning from a financial point of view. And then it comes to the last thing also, that is, we talk about the quality of the service of the supervision. And that is perhaps for SIVA to look into more, the Bureau to look into more in the future. Um, except the Bureau, these four subcommittees are the most important things for us in SIVA. First of all, we have the Rules Subcommittee. Um, if we count on the number of pages for role proposals, they are doing a better and better and better job each year. We had 118 pages plus 23 more coming in, so they were doing a great job. Exactly, it's not the rules, but it's the different countries that are proposing. And the question is actually, we've been doing this now for many years, and for every year we are getting more and more and more rules proposals. So if we have to propose changes in our rules, are we the rules so very bad that we need to have 100 pages of proposals to change them? That is the question. We have the second subcommittee that is extremely important. That is the judging subcommittee. And they will start to work almost immediately after the SIVA plenary, and that is to look upon who could be judges at the coming championships. We then have the GASC subcommittee, the Glider subcommittee, because they are almost autonomous within SIVA, and we always adopt what this Glider committee decides. Perhaps sometimes in the future, I think it would be good if we could have more people from gliders in rules and judging, so we could look on all different things together. But that is for the coming years to see, but it will be quite interesting. And then we have the catalog subcommittee. And um, the work we have with Arrest the System is, um, has been for many years quite difficult. It has eased up a lot. Two years ago, John was meeting the Arrested Commission and uh, started to rebuild the gap of confidence between SIVA and uh, Arrested System. This year, in the January 2013, I was also invited, and uh, I think it's all lack of communication, because we have both the same aim to move forward and have this catalog out as much as possible. What is then, after the subcommittees, what is actually then the most important things within SIVA? And that is the working groups. We have a whole number of working groups. And one of these working groups that's been, that was established very many years ago, was the FPS working group. And the task of this working group was to implement the method FPS. So, and also then, Nick was writing the software, the Acro software, where this method After seven, eight years with FPS, we need to perhaps um, think about it. Are we on the right path? Is what is coming out of our FPS system what we wanted? Could it be done somewhere better? Are there any type of problems? So we have asked the FPS working group to broaden the view a little bit and look upon FPS with fresh eyes. And also, that, that here you can see the task will be review the process of judges evaluation and scoring. That is the task that the viewer has written in. It's 
the task is quite wide, so it's a lot to the working group to decide themselves. But of course, there is a small working group, and this working group should also then cooperate with the judging subcommittee. And so we say when the working group has looked into this task, they need to go back and also to talk and discuss and cooperate with the judging subcommittee. And the task has also been given that they will present at the next plenary some sort of a result. Also that was uh, one of the things that started to rewrite the task for FPS Working Group was that we saw that very many judges had uh, their own pilots quite high. I don't say this is wrong. I don't say it's right. But it was obvious. They didn't have any very, very, very few of their pilots low. So this is something if we're talking about fair play. Perhaps that also the working group should look into. <coughs> so we have made a little bit of changes in this working group. We will have Nick who will be running this working group. He is the chairman. We have from France Gilles Guillemar. I hope I pronounce it correct this time. Uh, yeah, I know it's better, thank you. Uh, we have from Russia, Mikhail Mamisto. And then we have a name from, that is Doug Lavelle. He is from USA. And actually Doug has been writing a lot of article, articles in sport aerobatics. And he is not a fan of FPS. He has a lot of critical views. So we thought that would be perfect to have somebody in this group that is not strictly positive. But it's only one person that is we know is strictly, not strictly, but is have questions about the system that we are using. And then also to have this group with one more person that has knowledge in mathematics, and that is Vladimir Makula. So this is one of the, for the moment, quite important working groups that we have. Then we have this working group that said Contest Organization Working Group. Next please. And in that group we have also, we have a lot of things that Nick is heading this year. He's also heading the Contest Organization Working Group. And in the group we have Mary, Vladimir Makula and Elena. And this is also because Nick and Elena was doing a lot of job with the championship guide. And I think also this group should also be, this group is work, they don't have the responsibility for, for the championship guide, but they are doing a lot of work for that one. And that's quite important. And of course it has to be all the time for these working groups to report back to the viewer of what they are doing. Then we have the known sequences. You know we have that all delegates can make a proposal for the knowns. And uh, we have a working group for that, that summarize. And that has been uh, for the years. A lot of people, we have now made a small change. We don't have anyone that is the chairman of this group, but they are all very knowledgeable. They know exactly what to do. We have Martin Vetsko from Czech Republic. We have Coco from France. Nigel Hopkins from South Africa, Rob Holland from USA, Mikhail Mamisto from Russia, and Alan Cassidy from UK in this group. And we all, every year, look forward to see what this working group, when they come with their input from the sequences they have to look into. There is also a strategic working group, and uh, the strategic working group from time to time come with some good ideas and again Nick is running there together with uh, Mathieu Rollet 
Alan Cassidy, Mike Ewer, <coughs> Elena Klimovic, and me. Next. Then we have two other working groups. And there is one group here that the Achievement Program Working Group that is uh, been silent and nobody has really been asking about it. So uh, actually what I did a few days ago was to give Mati, who is the chairman of that group, a call. And Mati said, oh, do you want me to be on that uh, working group? Now so I said, no, you were the chairman, what do you say? So um, I was as surprised as you were. So in this case, I think this, is, um, this working group should actually be disestablished. I think that the achievements program is something that has been a lot with badges and other things and pins in USA, but it hasn't been so very successful in Europe. But I think it's a fantastic thing. So if we keep, keep this uh, working group, we close the working group, and then see, let's see, in a couple of years, I know that there will be more people interested in this, and we have, perhaps could start up another working group. Then we have a new working group. And this is something what I think is extremely important. That is part one, restructuring working group. What is this? What is this? Okay, let me say that uh, a number of years ago, John, what, how many years was that, 10 years ago, or when you merged Advanced and Unlimited? Seven or eight. Ah, yeah, it was a number of years ago. But when you are working in the jury, many times you have to really look into the rules. And that is the jury many times have done. And what we can see that for the same type of question area, it's written not in one place, not in two places. Many times it's written in three places in the rules. Before it was a little bit contradictory, these three things. But nowadays they're a little bit more streamlined, but it's not the same wording. But we think it's quite important to have the rules. We shouldn't rewrite the rules. The rules are adopted, so what we need to do is to restructure the rules. And this is very, very important, because there is always a lot of housekeeping, editorial things that we are doing in the rooms, and also then to clean up and make a good part one. So this is what the viewer has decided. And then we need people that are really into this with the, the rules, and that will be Mathieu, who will be heading this working group. We have Brian Howard in USA, who is the man behind the IAC rule book. We then also have from Russia, Elena Klimovic, and from South Africa, Jon Gayard. And their task uh, will be to look into it and come with proposals that will be presented then for the plenary next year. Yes, 2014. Yes, go ahead, Matthew. Just, just one point. I think you said, uh, to complement what you said, you said yesterday that this working group would then liaise with yeah. the yeah. RSC and JSC to submit uh, that so that this can be reviewed within this uh, body as well. That's all correct. Uh, and we said also that it's not for the rules subcommittee or judging subcommittee to decide what will be in this. This is the task is given that you are should cooperate so that two entities will produce a unified report that will go to plenary. That's correct. Okay, the next 
Vada. Rob talked about Vada, and um, it's um, you know we had this reference testing tool where we had a number of pilots from SIVA that was randomly picked out but the, by the 100 best. And these pilots were tested out of competition during the season. And then also we had in-competition testing. And the last time we had in-competition testing was in USA at World Aerobatic Championship. And when you don't hear anything about it, you know that there is no, that there is no problem at all. So this is quite good. And also then, as also FAI has been working hard to get rid of VADA. We accept that you should not use drugs in any ways. But what would the benefit be to use different ty types of drugs in aerobatics? And there is almost none. The question has been many times about the, what is called the recreational drugs. And one of these is alcohol. And actually VADA proposed to FAI that we should get rid of the restriction of alcohol. But the medical commission within FAI said, don't do that. Keep alcohol in as a not allowed. And because there is also a lot of other types of restrictions from different countries about alcohol. And they do apply from different countries. Next, please. LG? Yes, yes. Just a question. You said that there have been tests during the bug. Do you know how many in-competition tests have been taken? I think it was at least three. I can't tell you exactly. I don't know if you know. I know three. Yeah, two and whole three. And that is what I had. I think it could have been more, five. Because I know the discussion before was also, uh, they asked me before the competition, what would be the best day to come there? Because they wanted to have the top pilots. And I said then, okay, if you come on Thursday, we finish on Saturday, you will have almost complete uh, list of standing and you can easily pick out uh, among the 10 best which one you would like to test. I see that there were about 10 containers. Yeah. Mm. But there were, there were a number, and, and the, the most important thing, there was no problem at all. And uh, the organization also in USA had prepared very well for this. So it was without any types of problem. But also, going back to this, that we are asking why should they continue with this? Because there is no benefit for a pilot to use any type of drugs. Then we have also um, when we are talking about uh, the coffee mug, we don't have to bring them this afternoon. Um, we have done during the years, we've started different uh, projects, and uh, I will bring out in a little while the first interesting part for wind measurement, so I will come back to that one. The second point is that we, you know, we have the SIVA news website. And um, now we have had talks with Michael Garbers. He has a huge archive or database. And this will now be incorporated in the sivanews.com so we can have access from early times in 1900 all the way up to today where we can look upon search for pilots and countries and all different things at the same time you know when there is a small viewer working it's very difficult there is a volunteer organization and we lack of editors so I will urge to all of you here if possible, to help us to find editors for SIVA News for the future. We will be very pleased if we get it. Everybody's looking down when I say this. Uh, that is perhaps um, the problem. Then also, Rob talked about um, 
that you, it will be able on FAI page to do streaming. And if you look here on my left side, you see a video camera. This is already what we are doing. So, but we've said we won't stream two days of meetings, but that will not be interesting. But what will be interesting is that when we have the bids for championships coming tomorrow, we will stream that live to internet. Uh, to see what news will be. And, but it will be only the bids, because I think that could be interesting, and we will send out also information through different channels about this. Then we have a number of different projects that I would like also uh, Vladimir to explain. Uh, that is the first is, yeah, please go ahead. Vladimir. Yeah, I would like to shortly, LG asked me to uh, say a few words about uh, I have uh, reports about those three ready, so I promise to put them as soon as possible to the Siva News website. Uh, first of all, I was doing some, uh, not research, but uh, let's say writing some report about possibilities of making the judging video a little bit more comfortable uh, for judges to, to watch later, also to have it a little bit autonomously uh, driven, and uh, also to have it a little bit more uh, cheaper for the organizer. So that's the first one. The second one is the online scoring, respectively online marks collection, which is uh, uh, online scoring is done by Acro, by, by Nick. But uh, what uh, we are trying to achieve is to collect the marks using tablets and, and so on uh, uh, in lifetime on the judging line. Uh, we have some success, we have some progress. We, the system is definitely not ready to be used on the international competitions. We will see in coming months, uh, years, uh, or coming season. But uh, it has been already successfully used uh, on different national competitions in Czech Republic, Switzerland, uh, Slovakia, and so on. Uh, then uh, there is, a, there is a, uh, also some, some work regarding the uh, advanced HMD. Actually, uh, the word advanced HMD is not correct, but for simplification I just put A before the known unit. It's just the magic box which is uh, trying to uh, get the position of the aircraft even uh, like within the box, not just vertically. So that's regarding those three. And uh, once more, I promise that I would like to put as soon as possible those documents or, or pictures and stuff like that to the Siva News as soon as possible. Uh, I would like also to uh, appeal if there is anyone or if you know about anyone who is interested in working on those stuff, I will be happy to share any information, any workload and anything with him. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, and um, I would, could then just add that we had the so-called online scoring, online marks collection already in one FAI event that was in January 2011. We had a special event in United Arab Emirates, and it was working perfectly. We only had three judges, and we also had Vladimir running the server in the background. The system is working, but you need perhaps to have some really good IT person around the corner if there would be any types of problem. And what I didn't mention so far, one of the things that we have done this year is that we have started to use what we call e-learning. And that is we've had the tests for the judges on internet. And this is a huge step forward. Instead of getting all the judges one day early to a competition site, we have it available online so the judges can do the test many times and try to find out and learn what is correct and what is not correct. And this will actually, this was the first step in our direction what to go. We have a lot of things, ideas in the background, and that was step number one. And now, Pick will talk a little bit about the rest. Well, in principle, LG already said everything. The most important thing at the moment is don't look at it as a final system. Don't look at it as a 
reference for selecting judges because that's surely not what it's going to be for 2014. It's not going to be, I say again. At the moment, what we have is really only switching from the media paper to the media online. Instead of distributing paperwork with questions on it, they're just online. However, as LG already explained, it's going to be the target of the whole thing is first to have some kind of charges training system. I just generalize it right now. And based on the training system, some kind of uh, performance checking system, proficiency checking system, currency checking system, whatever you want to call it. But that's future music, that's not right now. Currently, again, and that's what we're going to use it for in 2014 again, it's just a change of media away from paper to online. I'm absolutely open for any input. What we're going to change next year for sure is we're going to work more with icons and pictures. That's first uh, thing. And uh, second thing was there were, of course, I mean, probably some of you tested it, uh, errors in there with uh, light little details. We try to eliminate them, of course, with new questions. So please give the, the whole beast a few years to establish, and I'm sure we're on a good track. Thank you very much. Um, you see here what I have in my hand. It's not that I'm going to start to drink coffee, uh, because there is a hole in the, this coffee mug, and there is an aerial sticking out. This is actually a device for wind measuring. The weight of this device is 18 grams. Inside is a GPS, a transmitter and a receiver, a temperature sensor, a humidity sensor, and what we do is that this can be sent up with a balloon, and uh, on the way up it predicts, it, it measures exactly how the wind is and transmits this back to the ground. There is also a possibility from the computer, you have a laptop where you run everything, and when you think, okay, I would like to release this thing. So what happened? This one is falling down, but it's falling down as it's only 18 grams and quite compared with the weight and the coffee mug, it falls quite slowly down and it's not damaged anything when it hits the ground. But uh, this software calculates depending on the wind going up, it knows the, how fast it's going down and it will immediately predict where it will land and it's easy for you to go out there and pick it up. We will test it during a different types of events this year, but it needs to be before we can use it in our normal championships with different things. We've tried also with the quadcopter to go up and release it on a specific point to let it uh, go down, but it needs a lot of testing. And this is what we have been doing during the year. We are testing new things to approve everything with our contest site. I will send this around so you can see uh, the little device that is used. And I think it's, this is the way that we would like to continue to go with the SIVA advanced projects. So I will... Tony, Vladimir, oh, perhaps you would like to look at it first. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, LG, question yes? about it. Um, will it be possible to provide so many devices to check the weather every half an hour as it's in the rules? And um, will it be possible to see the results of the check, the current check online, in process? Um, that could be done, but it's not possible now. But of yeah, course, well, as we're it's... We're talking about the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely, because yeah, as it's all the time transmitting down to transmitting. So, so every, everybody on site could see the exact that results, could be a not possibility. what is written on board <coughs> afterwards. That's, now you are getting closer to the aim that we have. But again, the, the cost of it and the, the ability of being used every half hour. Uh, today, the cost for one of these is about 100 euro each. So they are quite expensive now, but you know when, as there is in each one there is a GPS, 
there is a transceiver, there is a temperature sensor, a humidity sensor. I understand this. Why ask well, whether it will be possible to use such a, an expensive thing every half hour? Yeah. We will see what will happen, but I think that that's what, you know, that's what we would like to come in the future. But we will see. We need more money for that, and we don't have that for the moment.